Welcome to Metal Man X Builds, and today we're doing a tutorial for basic LED installation. Tools that you're going to need is obviously a kit to customize, LEDs, wire connectors, super glue and accelerator, flat black paint, pin vise, nippers, a power source, a hobby knife, and some wire strippers. The LEDs used in this build are from Evan Designs. You can find their link down in the description and all the other tools I've left affiliate links down below. So we're gonna start off with some prep work. Whenever you're doing a kit that is not a full painted build, it's a good idea to paint the inside of it with some flat black paint. And this is going to help you prevent things like light bleed. This was one of the biggest problems I had whenever I first started out doing LED work was that it would bleed through white plastic. So even if you're using a darker plastic, it's a good idea to coat the inside of it where you're going to be housing that LED with some flat black paint. Now moving on to the clear piece, it's a little bit too clear for my liking and so I'm going to coat it with some flat matte and then I'm gonna use some black paint to make sure the light is piping the way that I want. You're gonna to wanna to definitely do this with Gundam eyes. You're gonna to wanna to paint around the eyes and that way you don't have everything lit up. That flat black paint is gonna help you figure out where to go. Now for placing the LED, you're gonna use a little bit of super glue and some accelerator. Take some time, figure out where it's going to look best and then use the accelerator and super glue to stick it in place. Always make sure to test your LEDs throughout the build. That way you know if something has gone wrong. Even though these wires are really strong, if you pinch them, they can break. And you don't want to get to an end of a build and find out that your LEDs have broken. To prevent this, use some wire snippers on the plastic. Make yourselves little grooves if they're not available so that you can make sure that wire isn't going to get pinched when you put the parts together. Otherwise, you can end up with a real big headache of having to go all the way back through. Now, this LED has come out a bit bright to my liking, even with the flat matte, but that was kind of expected with the amount of surface area I was working with. You can use things like resistors or even lower level LEDs to prevent this in the future. So now let's move on to the thrusters. Hi. So we're going to be using our handy dandy pin vise here to make some pathways for the LEDs. So you can try to put that right in the center and use that pin vise in order to drill through the th thruster itself. You can go in at an angle if you'd like. I know some builders that do this, but I'm gonna use some super glue to actually affix the LED into place. I prefer this method to each their own. But with my method, I do have to bend the LED slightly so it's not facing off to the side with the chip LED. So it's a little bit of how you want to do it, but I find going straight through helps me out with making sure that I have the room that I, I want. So I'm going to drill through this thruster. You can see it coming out of the back and I'm going to try and make sure to keep that as straight as possible while being able to maintain the connection point that's going to be needed. If you're working with ball joints with thrusters, sometimes it is a good idea, idea to come out slightly to the left or right of that, that connection point so that you don't destroy um, your ability to connect it to the model kit. Keeping movability is essential and one of the most difficult parts. So I'm going to thread this LED through the thruster. I'm just going to pull it back in and I'll fix it with some super glue when I'm done. So I've already bent the LED for my, my purposes and so I have that all ready to go. So once again, make sure you're testing your LEDs as you go. Now I'm going to run it in through the backpack here. Very simple process with this one. You may have to drill holes 
to make sure that your LED can go through. Once again, it just depends on the model kit. I picked this one at random just so I could shoot, uh, show you guys what I do. Now, I am going to fix it on the back side with some super glue as well on that wire, and so I'll wrap it around just to give it some tension to keep it in place. Now that the backpack's done, I'm going to be putting in a wired connector that's going to connect to my power supply in the end. This is optional. You can just run the wires through. I like this because it means that I can actually go in and remove this and switch it to different power supplies um, as if I want to, if I want to make a diorama and need more power instead of having multiple wires and things like that. But what I'm going to use, I'm going to use my, my very cheap nippers here to actually make a little spot that's going to hide up under the side of the model and then use my hobby knife to clean it up. And so this is going to create a little connection point. And one thing I really like about these connectors from Evan Designs is when I'm running them through a backpack like this, it actually kind of looks like extra thrusters whenever I have it off of the power supply. So it actually does have some aesthetic design. So I'm going to make sure that my connector fits. Uh, I usually go by the motto red to right. That way I can remember which way to plug in the power supply. So I'm going to use my super glue and accelerator here and dab a little bit on the piece as well as on the connection. And I'm going to put them together. And then I will secure it with some accelerator once I'm done and get that into the position that I want and use some of the accelerator. I have heard other modelers say that you can use uh, baking soda. Um, I prefer the accelerator. It's just nice and quick for me. So now that we have that done, we are ready to start routing the wires throughout the body of the kit. So to do that, first thing I'm gonna do is I need to make a way for all the wires to connect together. So I'm gonna use my pin vise I'm going to drill a hole into the back of this kit where the thruster and the main body connect together. Different models will have different needs. Now I have a lot of excess wire here. I could use my wire cutters to strip it and then use a file to get rid of the magnetic coating. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the back end of my file here. And I'm actually just going to wrap it up real nice and tight. It's metal wire, so it tends to stay pretty good. Uh, and so then I'll just be able to slide off and hide it inside of the body cavity. Once again, different models will have different needs. So I'm going to do the same thing over here to my thrusters. I am going to use my my wire cutters on the connection point uh, because that one is a bit easier for me to strip because it's a little bit bigger gauge. So once I have that done, I'm going to route the wires out of the back and into the backpack. So I have one single point coming through here. So I'm gonna put all the wires together, get everything nice and neat, but then comes a bit of a problem. And you have a couple solutions for this. If these wires touch, if there's anywhere where these wires are touching, then they are going to short out and you're not gonna be able to actually light up your model kit. Even though these are three volts, you do run the risk of some kind of electrical short uh, and it can cause, you know, if you're using if you get a spark and you're using highly flammable paints or something like that, it's always a good idea to avoid these kinds of issues. So you can use electrical tape. Uh, what I'm going to be using in this case is going to be some shrink tube. And I am going to place it. First, I'm going to do my positive here. Now, I would definitely suggest using a heat gun and not my method here of just straight up using a lighter. It works, um, but at the same time, it is kind of 
kind of ridiculous how I decided to go about this. Um, a heat gun definitely works better. I have a heat gun, but I didn't want to break it out for some reason. And so I'm going to burn my fingers here on, you know, and I'm going to kind of mold it into place. I'm going to use my wire cutters here to strip off any excess wiring. And then I'm going to use a second little uh, shrink tube to cover up the negative terminal. And so I'm going to use my handy dandy lighter here. Um, probably could just keep it further away, but I was trying to get everything in the frame and I don't have the best camera in the world. Uh, and so, because the biggest problem with that is I run the risk of melting the other parts of the wire. Well, I'm gonna bend that into place so that it fits nice and neat inside of my backpack. And then I'm gonna be able to pull it all together. So I'm gonna make sure everything's nice and neat. I'm going to be able to slide the wires back into the main body with that excess area that I have and put it all together. And now we'll do a final LED test. And there you go. We have a working LED system and a HGGM. I hope this has been helpful. Now it's time for the glamour shot. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, support us on Patreon, and check out our sponsor, Evan Designs, where you can get 10% off your next order of $40 or more using the coupon code and affiliate link in the description.